Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday. And in this video, we're going to be working with GraphQL server side, and we're going to be solving the problem of n plus one queries when you're loading nested data from any database. We're going to be focusing on Postgres, a relational database, but I think the concepts are still the same whether you're using Mongo or whatever you're using. So this is the GraphQL we're working with. We're asking for some albums, the ID and the name of each one, but then we're asking for the artist that that album is from. So here we've got uh, an album called Turn It Around by Comeback Kid, another um, album by Comeback Kid, then Life In Your Way. We've got some, some uh, early 2000s hardcore going on, and then Haste The Day down here. So it looks fine, right? It, it's pretty quick, but the truth is, is that we've loaded about 11 albums here, and it's having to do 12 queries to get that data. So it's having to do one query to grab the, atom, the albums and then another subsequent query to find each artist. It's really inefficient when what would be ideal is if we could just sort of pull them all up and query it and load them in one go. So let's take a look at the console here. I'm going to clear this out. And if I run this query, here you can see because I'm debugging, this is all of the queries it's running. So it's loading an artist one, loading an artist one, loading an artist with ID three. And it's having, you can see, to do all of these queries just to load the data. So quick overview of what we're working with. We're using Nex to connect to our database and build queries. You could swap this out for whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, the concepts are all the same. We've got the definition of our GraphQL schema. So we've got a query where we can ask for albums. And then each album has an artist. And this is what the artist looks like. Whenever you have a query, uh, sorry, a schema, you need to build resolvers, which is how to basically load the data uh, to resolve each field in that schema. So here is how we find the albums. We're, we're loading them from the database. And then we've got how to load each album and each artist. So herein lies the problem. We're getting an album, and in each album you can ask for its artist. So this query is running every time we're asking for an um, album's artist. And it's just running this for every album. It's going to re-query this every time. So what we're going to do is use something called a data loader. So it's from Facebook, I believe, or maybe it's from Apollo, I'm not sure. But the concept came from Facebook. And it's basically something that's going to pull up all the IDs of, in this case, the artists we want to load. And then it will do a single query at once to load them. So we've got the data loader here, but we're not yet using it. So we're going to expose this data loader through our Apollo servers context. If you're brand new to building server-side GraphQL, I'll link to another video I made that sort of does an overview of all this, but this is specifically about um, avoiding n plus one queries with a data loader. And specifically, we're going to cover how to load single records. I'm gonna do another video for how to efficiently load multiple records. So say you're loading a whole bunch of artists and each artist has many albums. That's not what we're covering here. This is where we're trying to load one record for each of the rows. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an object called a loader like this. And we're going to build a loader for the artists. So just like this. So the artists will be a new instance of data loader. Data loader like that. And what you pass to data loader is a function that's going to receive the IDs of all of the artists that we need to load. So we're going to be using some promises. So we'll say it's async. And then we need to return something at the end. So what we need to eventually return is a new array where we basically take all of the IDs and map them. And we find the corresponding record from the database. Now we're not there yet. We first need to load all of the data. So we're gonna put this into a variable called rows and we are gonna await because uh, next will return us a promise. 
So the way you work with next is you say we're going to start with our database connection and we're going to say that it's from the artist table. And maybe before we even do that, we're going to select all of the columns from the artist table. Wherein, so where the ID is in this array of IDs that the data loader is giving us. So if we just save this, we now have all of the rows to work with. So now we've got an array of IDs and we have an array of rows and we basically need to merge them together. So as we're mapping each of the IDs, we need to find the corresponding row from this array here. Now this could be inefficient if each for each ID you're having to loop through all of the rows. What if you had a thousand rows and a thousand IDs, you're having to loop a thousand times a thousand times. That's a lot. So we're going to introduce an intermediary step where we basically take the rows and create a lookup object so that it's a lot easier to find the corresponding um, row that matches the ID. So the way we do that, we can call this lookup. And what we're going to do is take the rows and reduce them. So the reducer function here will always receive the accumulator object and the row that we're currently iterating over. And we'll start this off with an empty object that will eventually populate. So what we'll do here is we will take our accumulator and we will set um, with uh, using the rows ID as the key and that will be equal to the row and then we'll return the accumulator. So what we've ended up with now will be an object that sort of looks like this, where you have like ID one is this row, ooh, oh boy, row and all of its data, all of its columns and whatnot. We've got ID two and its data, et cetera. But because we've done this, it's a lot easier now as we're mapping the IDs and we're trying to find the corresponding row record. What we can do is just use the lookup and try to find the corresponding row. A lot easier than re-looping through the rows every time. Now it may not be found, and in that case we're just going to return null instead. So if this is truthy, it will return that, or so else basically it will return the null value. So I believe this is good to go. We now need to pass our loader into the context, and by passing loader in, we can now go up to our resolver and rather than resolving each artist like this, we can take our context, access our loader here, and we can return loader dot, so we're working with loader dot artists here, and we want to load the artist that has an ID of Album dot artist ID like this. So let's clear out the console so we can make sure that it's it's doing the uh, the request more efficiently now. We'll come back here. We'll perform the same query. The results look the same, so I believe it's good in that respect. And here you can see that instead of doing sort of twelve queries, um, it's displaying three. I actually only think it's doing these last two. For some reason with Next, when you're debugging, it always shows sort of this first query twice. I don't know why it's doing that, but the important one here is that it's selecting star from artists where the ID is in one, three, or four. So it's pooling up all these IDs, the three of them, and it's doing a single query. And then um, it's providing that data to our resolver rather than having to do a query every time like we were doing before. Now, I'm going to now work on um, refactoring this code to make it a lot more reusable than it currently is because I made a resolver that was very specific to artists. I wanna to try to make a generic resolver that can be used to load any single record from any table. So what I'm going to do is create a class called single. And I am going to create um, a class level variable and I'll call it the loaders. 
And the loaders will start off as um, an empty object because there's none, but that is fine. So functions or methods our class are going to have will be load. And just like sort of when we were working with load up here and we are passing in the ID to load, it's going to be similar like that, but we're going to pass in the table name and then the ID that we're trying to load like that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the corresponding loader for the table that we're working with. So I'm going to create another function called find loader and you'll pass in a table. It will either find or create a new instance of that loader and return it. So what we can do here is we can say if there is not a loader for this table already. So basically we'll have one loader per table. If there is not one, we'll need to create a new one. So here's where we can basically come down and copy this loader here. And we can come back up here. Sorry, this should be this because we're in a class. So we're going to say this loaders at the table is a new loader. Except, and the only thing we really need to change is we're not always selecting from artists anymore. We're selecting from whatever table we have a loader for. So we'll come down here after the if statement and we will return the loader that was either already there or that we just created. So the loader at the specific table. So we'll come back up to our load function and what we'll say is we'll say const loader is equal to this dot find loader. We'll pass in the table so it can either find uh, one that already existed or create a new one. And then we can return loader.load for the ID that we're trying to load. So if we take this class, we come back down to this loader object we have. And instead of creating one for artists, we're actually going to create one sort of to be used for any single record that we want to load from the database. And we'll say single is a new single loader like that. So now we need to refactor our code slightly to be able to use this new single generic loader rather than the one that was specific to artists. So we'll come back up to where we were using our loader. And I'll just keep the existing line here for now so we can see what's changed. So loader is our sort of object that has all of the loaders in it um, that was passed to context. This is the object and it was passed in our context here so that we have it available in our resolver functions. So loader, we want the single loader and we want to load for the artists table, the ID album dot artist ID like that. So with this now loader called single, we could use it to load um, one album at a time, one artist at a time. Maybe there's a record label. We could load one of those at a time. Anytime you need to load a single record from your database and you want to do it efficiently to avoid N plus one queries, you can use this single and tell it to load from a table for an ID. Let's just make sure it still works. Let's clear this out. Come back to graphical and execute the query. Go back to our I terminal and we can see that it's still doing things in the same way. It's selecting star from artists where the ID is in one of these. And if we go back and sort of review the code that we wrote. So for each data loader object, this here, it will eventually basically pull up all the IDs and in one um, function call, it will pass them as an array of IDs. We load everything from our database. We basically take those and we convert it to a lookup object where the key is the, um, the ID of each of the rows and its value is the whole row. And then we take our IDs, our array of IDs, and we map them where we want to find, up the, find the corresponding row using the ID from our lookup object. And if it's not there, instead of undefined, we'll um, return null instead. So that means the value returned from this resolver function will 
be either the, um, the artist or null if that's the case. But all we had to do is say, go look in the artist table and find me the artist with this ID, and it's all done efficiently. So that's the video for today. Coming up in the future, I'm going to do something similar, but for finding multiple, like the has many relationship in relational databases. And I'm going to do a variation on that where I use um, sort of a more advanced concept called a, a window function to do it even more efficiently. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and have a great day.